In the last video, we took a look at the menu and toolbar of Mod Organizer 2. And in this one, we'll be moving on to the real meat of MO2, the mod list. Something you're not going to want to miss. Before going on, remember to like the video so we can circulate it around the internet and help others mod their game. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any more modding guides. Check out my Discord in the description if you have any questions or leave them in the comments. I do my best to answer them as quickly as I can. Lastly, if you don't understand any information, it was covered in my prior guides, so check out the entire playlist down below if this is your first video. Okay, the mod list. This is the left pane of your MO2 window, and I have referred to it by many names throughout the course of my guides, but the final name I will be settling on is mod list. What you need to know is that not only is this a list of all the mods that you've installed through Mod Organizer or any other means, but it's also a dynamic installation order. What do I mean by this? Basically, if you are installing mods to your Skyrim data folder manually, or through the use of older mod managers like Nexus Mod Manager, you would be overriding asset files from conflicting mods in your data directory, with mods installed last overriding those installed first. The mod list is no different in that regard. The assets of mods towards the bottom of the list will overwrite any that are above them. The only difference is because of the virtual file system used by MO2, which essentially compiles your data folders at launch, redundant files are always kept in their separate mod data folders. This is unlike other mod managers that delete overwritten files from your data directory and revert them back if mods are uninstalled. Also keep in mind that just like we talked about in the loot video, the mod list doesn't affect plugin load order, or which plugin records override each other, just surface level file name conflicts between assets like scripts, meshes, textures, or plugin files themselves. So let's talk about some of the very powerful features the mod list has. Obviously, the first thing you can do is enable or disable mods from loading into your game by checking the white square located on the left side of any mod. You can also drag and drop mods around to change your installation order anytime you wish. Again, this allows assets like textures, meshes, and scripts to override each other with assets contained in the lowest mod being dominant. To quickly see if a mod has any conflict files, simply look at its flags. If you see a yellow lightning bolt with a plus beside it, that means that the current mod has files that are overriding another mod. A yellow lightning bolt with a minus sign next to it means that it has files that are being overwritten by a different mod. Obviously, both a plus and a minus sign means that it contains both overriding files and contains files that are also being overwritten. You can see which specific mods are doing the overriding and are being overwritten simply by clicking on the mod in question. MO2 will highlight mods with overwritten files in green and mods with overriding files in red. These can also quickly be seen in the mod list pane scroll bar. If you double click on the mod in question and go to conflicts, in the general tab you can see a much more detailed list of asset conflicts. The upper list shows any files that are being overwritten by the mod you are looking at, and the middle list shows any files from this mod that are being overwritten. If you hit the bottom most drop down arrow, you can also see any assets that don't conflict with any other mods. Counters for these files are also provided so you can quickly see how many there are in each category. If you click on the Advanced tab, you can see a complete list of files included in the mod, in one list and their conflicts or lack thereof. You can also search for specific files or apply filters to the list. Additionally, you can also hide any file from the Conflicts tab by right-clicking it and selecting Hide. This will prevent it from being loaded in-game and cause the preceding mods file to show up instead if there are no other overwrites. Back to the mod list flags though. A few other noteworthy ones include the white lightning bolt, which means that all files in a given mod are being overwritten, effectively rendering it useless in your load order. A green chess piece with a question mark, which denotes that a certain mod has come from a nexus page different from the game you are modding. 
That one in particular comes up often when modding Skyrim SE, as some original edition mods are compatible with special edition, or can become compatible through some minor tweaks, so you may want to use them in your game. If you don't port them properly, however, they can cause crashes, so be careful when doing that. The other one you'll see a lot is a heart with a question mark, which means that you haven't endorsed the mod you are using. To remove it, simply right-click on the mod and hit Endorse. If there are any other flags you don't recognize, you can simply hover over them and a description will pop up telling you why they are present. The other big feature of the mod list is that it includes the version number of each mod you have installed from Nexus. The unfortunate limitations of this are that mods that aren't downloaded from Nexus or installed manually won't include their version number, but instead their installation date. This can however be changed by double clicking on the mod, going to Nexus Info and entering the information manually in version. While we're here, you can also edit the mod's Nexus ID, if ever it's incorrect, and you can also read its description, though I suggest hitting the Open in Browser button instead. The other problem with version numbers in MO2 is that some mod authors can have different versions of their mod for different mod setups. ENBs are a good example of this, and this can cause MO2 to flag the version as red despite it being correct for your load order. You also need to tell MO2 to check the versions for installed mods manually by clicking on the screwdriver and wrench drop-down menu and selecting check for updates. Just a warning about updating mods guys, even if you do have an outdated version of a mod, that doesn't mean you need to update it. If your setup is working fine, it may just be better to leave your setup as is. If the latest version patches a bug or something, it's definitely a good idea to update. But if it's a large release that changes a lot of things about the mod, it may create new conflicts for your load order. For that reason, it's always a good idea to read over the latest patch notes in the readme files or Nexus description. It's also wise to consider how the changes could affect your load order before updating. The other two filter headers are Category and Priority. These should be pretty self-explanatory. Categories are just the Nexus categories each mod is grouped in. This again can be easily changed by double-clicking on the mod, going to the Categories tab, and checking any category you want to apply, then selecting the primary category at the bottom. Priority is the mod's position in the mod list, i.e. its installation position. This is how the mod list is sorted by default. You can access more sort filters by right-clicking on the filter header and checking or unchecking any you see fit. Let's move back to the mod menu for a second and go over everything we've missed. That's the menu you get when you double click on any mod in your list. The first tab allows you to view any text files included in a mod. This is handy for quickly glancing over readmes. You can also edit and save them directly from MO2. If you ever set up your own personal conflict log for your playthroughs, this makes it really easy to write down any issues you find. Also, if you see any open in file explorer buttons from here on out, those allow you to open the location of the file in File Explorer. The Any Files tab is the same as the text editor from before, the only difference being is it only shows any files. Images shows any pictures that may be included in a mod. These used to be fairly common to show comparison shots, but are less frequent today because of image galleries on Nexus. Optional ESPs is a tab you may find yourself using from time to time. By moving any available ESPs installed in a mod into the Optional section, you can hide the plugin from MO2 which will prevent it from being loaded in-game or showing up in your load order. Unfortunately, any ESPs set to Optional are independent of any profiles that you may have created, so hidden plugins remain hidden in all of your profiles, which could cause issues if you forget about any plugins you may have hidden like this. If you have a mod merged with a patch plugin that is required for one profile and not the other, I would just suggest installing two versions of the mod, one with and one without the patch, then enabling or disabling it in both of the mod lists. This will remove the chances for manual errors. Where you might find this useful though is when installing something like a faux mod and you find a patch for a mod you plan on installing later. Rather than halting the installation process and installing the other mod, you can install the patch first and hide it, then install the other mod when you wish. You can then move the patch back to available ESPs when you're ready to use it. The Notes tab allows you to write personal messages about any mod you have. You can write a small comment at the top that shows up in the Notes column of the mod list if it's enabled, but longer notes can also be written in the bottom text box and can be seen when hovering over the Mods Notes column or Flag column. 
The last tab, File Tree, shows every file located in a mod, the same way you would see them in File Explorer. You can open any files through your default run program by right-clicking and selecting Open slash Execute. You can also do most other things like you do in File Explorer, like create folders, rename files, and delete files. You can also hide any file or folder from here as well. Lastly, if you are unsatisfied with MO2's file management interface, you can open any file or folder in File Explorer using any of the Open in Explorer buttons. The final thing I want to show you about the mod menu is that any tab can be dragged around and repositioned, with the first tab opening by default. Because I use the file tree tab so much, I like to place it first to avoid any unnecessary clicks, but you can rearrange them in whatever way makes sense to you. Perhaps one of the biggest features of MO2 is the fact that you can have multiple mod lists through the use of profiles. These can be accessed just above the mod list pane via a drop-down list. You can create profiles through the use of the toolbar profiles icon as mentioned in the last video, or through the manage button in the drop-down list. When you select a different profile, the list of enabled mods will change and you can independently rearrange the list from one another in the mod list pane. Profiles and versatile installation order management are incredibly powerful when used in tandem to resolve mod conflicts. Even if you don't know what any of your mods change in game, you can find the one or two mods that are the source of the conflict simply by duplicating your main profile and applying trial and error and the process of elimination. By slowly disabling active mods and testing the issue in game, you can find the problematic mods in your test profile, then make the appropriate changes to your main profile by installing a patch or removing one of the mods entirely. All too often, I find that people have an issue with their game and choose to reinstall everything, starting over from scratch, but this is something that is simply not necessary with MO2. While you may have to restart your save game if it's corrupt, you don't have to re-download all your mods and waste tens of hours only to get back to where you were. Back in the Nexus Mod Manager days, sure, that may have been the quickest thing to do, but remember that MO2 doesn't even touch Skyrim's data folder, so reinstalling the game doesn't change anything. You're just scrapping your mods and starting over for nothing. It's much easier to actually find the troublesome mod or mods, then figure out how to resolve the conflict by, say, asking on my Discord. Here's the cool thing, though. Even if you do want to start over, a vanilla game is just a few clicks away. Simply create a new profile and untick everything in the mod list. Don't waste time uninstalling the game or MO2 in an effort to fix your problems. Remember, we did that once already at the start of these guides, and any more is unnecessary. Okay, let's go over the rest of the buttons above the mod list. The screwdriver and wrench dropdown allows you to easily edit the mod list by enabling or disabling visible mods. These buttons couple nicely with the bottom filter which allows you to search for mods, just be sure not to touch these when you are viewing your entire mod list. In the same drop down menu, you can also install a mod manually, create an empty mod, or create a separator. Empty mods are useful for storing generated files, from mods like Forge New Idols in Skyrim or Perma, and separators allow you to visually separate the mod list for yourself. Under the screwdriver and wrench drop down, you can also find a refresh button for the GUI. This is useful if you've installed a mod to the MO2 mods folder manually and need the mod list to update within MO2. Finally, you can also find a button to export your mod list to a comma separated value file, which is basically a written spreadsheet of your mod order. The folder dropdown next to the screwdriver and wrench dropdown is extremely useful as it contains navigational shortcuts to File Explorer for every folder associated with modding your game and currently active profile. That means as you select different profiles, certain shortcuts like those to your any files will update because MO2 has profile specific any files. Basically, everything except your personal mod utility folder is here, so definitely use these and save yourself some time. The final two buttons allow you to backup and restore your mod list. These can be an alternative to duplicating your profile in the process of resolving mod conflicts or when testing new mods. I personally just use profiles when doing this as it makes the most sense to me, but this method is here if you prefer it. It's also a good middle ground if you just want to test one or two mods. To use these, hit the blue arrow button to back up your current profile and the yellow arrow when you're ready to restore it, then select which backup to restore. To the right of those buttons, you can find the active mods counter for your selected profile. If you hover over this value, you can see specific details like how many total mods there are, how many are DLC, how many are separators, and how many mod backups you have. 
We'll go over creating those in just a minute. You'll also notice that there are two categories, all and visible. The visible values change as you filter mods in the bottom search filter. All right, let's go back to the mod list for a minute and check out the right click menu. When you right click a mod in the list, an action menu will appear, which offers many of the features we have already covered. Under all mods, you can find the same buttons you have in the screwdriver and wrench dropdown. You can change the selected mods categories and primary category and force check the mod for updates. You can also enable or disable all the selected mods you've shift clicked or control clicked on. Selected mods are highlighted in blue. Using send, you can move selected mods to the top or bottom of your list, or even specify a priority location or separator. The right-click menu also allows you to rename, remove, or reinstall any mod, and has quick links to its nexus page and location on your drive. You can also create a backup of any mod here. Right-clicking a backup in your mod list will allow you to restore or remove it. If you're going to be playing around with files of any specific mods, backing them up first is always a great idea, as they are not profiled file specific. Finally, right-clicking on a separator will allow you to rename or remove it and change its color. All right, we're getting close. Now let's finish up by talking about what's below the mod list. The search filter obviously allows you to search for items in the mod list, but what you may not have known is that you can search for multiple items through the use of the pipe character to separate your search terms. The pipe character is a vertical line located just under your backspace if you didn't know. So if I typed in something like sky UI space pipe space SKSE, everything that contains sky UI or SKSE will appear in the mod list. You can also repeat the pipe multiple times in your search as well. The groups dropdown list to the left of the search filter gives you alternate ways to sort your mod list. I've never used anything besides no groups, but if you've used it and know what it's useful for, let me know down below. Finally, the leftmost filter area allows you to view filter categories for your mod list. Many of these are just Nexus categories. However, there are also MO2 specific categories based on either their state in the MO2 mod list or the files they contain. The MO2 specific category filters are denoted by their angle brackets. You can select one of the filters by simply clicking on it or multiple by control clicking. For instance, let's say I wanted to see checked mods that also contained any files that are listed under environment on Nexus. I would select those three criteria, and as you can see, the only mod that fits all of those for me is Obsidian Weathers and Seasons. But now, let's say I wanted to see mods that just contain any files or were environmental. I would then control click checked to remove that filter because we don't want to see all the mods that are checked and hit the or bubble at the bottom. Now I can see all the mods that contain any of the selected filter categories. To clear the filters, I can simply hit clear or clear all filters below my mod list. Be sure to tick back the and bubble so you don't end up with an empty mod list. As you can see, with MO2, the methods for filtering and searching mods are nearly limitless and irreplaceable when it comes to troubleshooting or tinkering around with your mod list. Doing something like filtering all your SKSE dependent mods or scripted mods is something you can't do with Vortex, but is two clicks away in MO2. Yet another reason to use MO2 over any other mod manager out there. Hopefully now that you've seen this video, you know how to navigate your way around the MO2 mod list a little better. It's kind of a lot to take in, I know, but just remember this video for the future when you're trying to find a specific feature in MO2. In the next video, we'll talk about the right pane and all the tabs included in it. At that point, you'll know just about everything in MO2 and we'll be able to get into the more nitty gritty aspects of modding, from law generation to automated patchers and manual record editing. Thanks for watching. Remember to like the video to help spread it around the internet. Tell me how you feel about MO2 after watching this video. Were you surprised to learn anything or did you have everything down pat? Subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss the next upload. Next video is to the right if it's out and the guide overview is to the left. See you in the next one.